So I'm sitting here on our new Hughes Red Fisher 16. And this boat has been in the backcountry circles for a really, really long time and it's in its old design. This is a completely ground up new design for us. But one of the reasons that boat, the older boat, was so popular is because it was so manageable. Um, not only could you put it in your garage, super easy to tow, but great boat to run around in, very simple, easy, um, great family boat. Um, but you could still hardcore fish out of it. You can fish with a trolling motor or pull it. And so it does a lot of things really, really well, but we've made a lot of advancements to the boat. And if you'll spend a few minutes with me this morning, I would like to walk you through the whole boat and show you exactly what we've done. So one thing that was really important to us when we re redesigned the boat is we wanted to make sure it ran really well with the four-stroke engine packages. And the four-stroke engines are a little heavier than the older two-stroke engines. So that requires a little different balance in the boat. So that was really important to us. So with this particular boat, and I'll talk about the engine and performance a little bit more later, but you can run anything from a 70 all the way up to a 115 on the boat. And even if with the 115, the boat balances really well because it has a lot of volume in the hull, that sort of thing. So that was really important to us. We also wanted to make the boat even more user friendly. Um, so we've done that in a number of ways also. Um, the boat is 16 feet, six inches long, okay? And it has a, a 7.3 beam. So it's really beamy for its length. And what's nice about that is that means it's a really stable boat, okay? And that's obviously great when you're in chop or any of that kind of stuff. But it's also really nice when somebody's on the push bowl and if they move or something like that it's not going to pitch a lot so the person on the bow isn't going to feel like you know they're going to lose their footing or something like that so the boat overall like I said 16 and a half feet the reason that's so nice is because you can put it in your garage like I talked about that's really important um, it just does a great job of a bunch of different things and I'm gonna walk through the whole boat while I walk through um, notice that I still have a bunch of room to move around uh, notice that there are no awkward steps or anything like that. One thing with the flats boat, a lot of people don't realize, you look at the beam and that is full usable beam, that's seven foot three inches, because you can actually walk on the gunnel. So you can walk around the cockpit area, even if people are in the cockpit and it's not crowded or anything like that. Then we have this big deck up forward here, okay, which is actually op obviously a great fishing platform, okay. The boat carries that beam forward a good bit, so it's nice and wide up here, okay? So you can fish two people up here, no problem. It also supports this deck really well. A lot of times you have a big wide deck on top, but a very narrow hole up to that deck, and then you have a big deck up there and it almost pitches back and forth side to side a lot. This is nice and wide underneath this deck, so you're not, you're not having that top heavy effect. It's also nice and wide down there, so you have a lot of volume in the, in the bow, in the hull. And that's important because if you're fishing in chop or anything like that, a lot of these type boats, um, you can get waves over the bow. The bow will actually dip, and that's because there's not enough volume for it. This boat has enough volume to keep you nice and high, okay, up here. So you're not going to get that dipping action. You're not going to get water coming over the bow. Um, it comes standard with a 24 volt trolling motor wiring system in it and that includes a plate up here that's laminated into the deck that if you want to put a, a trolling motor on an aftermarket you can do that very easily. All you have to do is just drill and tap that, that, that plate and drop in your, your unit, your trolling motor unit on top of that. We offer motor guide as a factory option in that 24 volt system. It's plenty of power all day long, any kind of current you're going to get into. Um, you're gonna have no problem with that 24 volt system. And the plug is actually, and I'll show you this when I get in here, the plug is actually down in here, okay? So it's nice and out of the elements. One of the problems with putting a trolling motor plug on the deck is that obviously you're gonna get salt water on it or, or that kind of thing. And so you wanna have it out of the way and down hidden. So what you do is you, you, we have, offer an option called a pass-through that's basically a, a pass through the deck right here that has a plug on it you screw that down, that trolling motor wire passes through there, and then you can put the trolling motor plug in the plug underneath here. Um, and it works really, really well. The really nice part about it is when you want to take that trolling motor off, all you're left is with a little deck cap on the deck there. So it's still very, very clean. Obviously, when you have a flat spot like that, a clean deck is important. That's why we have this cleat here that's a flush mounted cleat so it's not going to get in the way not going to be a toe stub or something like that you could attach a bow tower up here as well 
um, for sight fishing applications. Also, you can put a bass seat plate up here as well. A lot of people are going to be using this boat for a bunch of different kinds of fishing applications, and um, you know th that includes bass fishing. So you can put a swivel seat up here, no problem. There's plenty of room. Um, so I'm going to walk back here, and I'll show you the big storage bin here. On a boat this small, you know, there's limited real estate. So you really have to be smart about how, using the real estate you have. And um, we've been building flats boats longer than anybody and built more than anybody. So we've had that pretty well mastered. And so you can see this great big storage box here goes all the way forward. You can put tons of gear in here, okay? Has a nice gas shock assisted lid. So that lid, it helps you raise the lid when you're lifting it up. Lid stays up, out of the way, also has the friction hinges on it. You have the, the two gym latches there um, that are lockable, so you can put all your gear in here and lock it up, that sort of thing. Here's that plug I was talking about right there. So, as I said, it's really important to have that plug out of the elements. That way, you're never going to get any salt water on it or anything like that. You can see, see the big, deep lid troughs, okay? That's really important because if you have water coming on here, obviously you don't want to get it into the compartment. Those lid troughs, that water goes into those lid troughs and then drains right into the cockpit, okay? So you don't get any water in your, in your dry storage, which is obviously very important. Another thing that limits that water from getting into that, that dry storage is that gasket material down there. You press that lid, you latch those latches down, and that seals that lid to that gasket material. So that's another aspect that keeps it really dry. But this boat is a true self bailing boat, which um, means basically that any water that goes on the deck is gonna drain out the back of the boat, okay? It's not gonna get into the bilge. So the boat could be left in the water, no problem. And you're not gonna worry about you know, the boat sinking or anything like that, because it truly drains out, out the back. The floor is high enough so that you get a good positive flow down, so that water has the head pressure it needs to flow out the back. So the cockpit stays dry, okay? But at the same time, you get, and so there's no, when I mean cockpit stays dry, I see no water coming in through the back, but when you get water on the deck or anything like that, that water flows right out the back. So getting down to the console, first off, note how roomy it is. There's a pl plenty of room to walk around. Boat comes standard with a 35 quart angle cooler. This really nice cushion package. You can see the accents on the cushion, the nice logo. It's really, really pretty looking. Also super comfortable. I like this setup because I can put my feet up here on the deck. I'm nice and sort of locked in, but comfortable at the same time. Have this really great backrest cushion that's super comfy. This can be removed. It's accessed through the back side of the, the console here. So it's screwed on, it can be removed. There is an access behind it to allow you to get to the back side of your electronics. But we've gasketed it in there, so there's no way you're gonna have water come in through that, that access opening. But sort of clever use of space and allows you access to that back side of your console. As I walk around the console, note I still have plenty of room. And like I said, um, the great thing about a flats boat is you can always walk around the gunnels. So, and this boat, as you can see, I just st stayed, I stood up here and the boat doesn't tip or anything like that. So very stable, but that's what gives you additional room. These rod racks are standard. You have them on either side of the console, okay? You can also option this console out with the windshield if you like, and that would come with the over the console grab rail. So that way um, you're grabbing that grab rail instead of the windshield if you're walking by or anything like that. So you don't have any uh, um, chance of breaking the windshield. All right, coming back here, this is a great setup. Uh, you have two handholds here. You have the, the standard handhold on the console like that, okay? Then you also have this nice handhold right here. Notice how we did this where we cut this out and put this billeted rail on here. These are standard. Uh, this allows you to, to grab a hold. It's nice and comfortable, but the handrail is not coming out into the passageway here, so it's not going to... You're not going to bump into it with your leg or anything like that. It's nice and flush, but you can still get your hand, hold, hand on it very easily and comfortably. It's, I love having the, both handles there so you're doubly secure if you need to be. As with any flats boat, rod storage is important, and, and we utilize the under gunnel rod storage here standard. Um, you have eight tubes to go, that go forward that protect your tips, um, especially important for longer fly rods. This will accommodate fly rods. Um, over nine feet. You can see the rods 
tuck nicely up underneath the gunnel. That's important because if not, if this gunnel's too too narrow or you have the rod racks that protrude too far out, you're going to hit those rods as you walk by them. So here you can see we have a spinning rod under here and also a fly rod. They're tucked way under there. So they're they're safe, they're out of the way. You're not going to bump into them um, and, and not break the handles or anything like that or trip or anything. So great rod storage. So one of the big improvements we made was on the new console. And there are a number of things that are really nice about this. First off, you have this big open space here. So you can put up to a 12 inch unit on here. We factory option them with the garments, um, but they'll fit any 12 inch unit here, which is really nice. It's nice and wide enough where it does give you some coverage and some break from the wind, especially if you were to get that optional windshield here. You can be behind, the, behind all this and get out of the elements a little bit. But it's not so big that you, you know, it takes up all the walk around space. You, as I showed earlier, you have plenty of walk around space. It's optional with the hydraulic tilt steering wheel. Obviously that allows you to adjust the steering wheel to your height. If you're standing up, you might want to adjust it up like that, or you can pull it all the way down depending on your comfort level. All right, you have everything in hands reach. The binnacle is right where it's supposed to be here. Steering wheel, you can pull all this all the way up and get onto your trim tabs without ever having to take your hand off the binnacle. So you can do your trim tabs, you can do your, your trim on your engine. This boat does come uh, optional with a um, jack plate. So if, we, if the boat were to have a jack plate, there'd be a blinker style switch right here that you can use without ever taking your hand away from the steering wheel. So your hands always stay on, on the most important things. But everything is right here, easy to reach, very easy to see. We have the, the Yamaha gauge there, backlighted switch panel here, you, you, really nice use look switch panel. Um, this is labeled. Uh, you have breakers right below it, so if for whatever reason these were to, to uh, pop or something like that, you can easily reset them with just the press of the button. So, but very functional, looks great as well, and um, like I said, takes that big unit, which is important. And also, it comes standard with that Ritchie compass up top. So another great design enhancement on this new boat is this whole setup back here. And uh, so we have this really cool optional footrest slash step to the pulling tower. So you can see I'm leaning back right here. It's super comfortable as a backrest. But you can also, and I'll show you this in a minute when it's in this down position, you can step on here and easily get up to the, the pulling tower very easily. So this is a really, really nice feature. It folds completely out of the way. So then you have access to your whole back deck area. But if you take a minute to look at this too, is this home seat cushion right here, all right? So you notice how when I open it up, the cushions stay with the, with the uh, lid there which is really nice because oftentimes, you know, you're going to have always a bench seat cushion on a flats boat like this, okay? Oftentimes, you have to move that cushion out of the way to get into that storage box there. And that's a hassle and it gets in the way and you have to reach over to get into the storage box. With this setup here, it comes right up on the cushion itself. So you don't have to deal with moving it out of the way or anything. You can see we have the big access here into this great big storage compartment. You can fit tons of stuff. Once again, big lid trough, so that's going to drain very easily. We have the lockable gym latches here that secure that down just like that. Okay, so they're lockable, like I said, so you can leave all your gear in here. But just a really, really nice setup. This thing can, this cushion can pull off there, no problem. You can take it off, so if you want to store it and not have it out in the elements, if you leave your boat outside or whatever, um, it comes off on sort of a, a peg system. Just put it, put it in your garage, and then when you're ready to go fishing, just push it back down, line up the pegs, and it secures there, and it sits, works really, really well. So that's a really nice design enhancement. It's really important to us. We know the boat is gonna be used for a bunch of different things. You know, obviously, if you fish a lot, you're gonna end up using live bait some. We wanted to design the live wells so they would accommodate all sorts of bait from little pilchards or white bait to even, you know, bigger mullet and that sort of thing. So the boat comes standard with this centerline live well right here. Uh, that's almost 24 gallons. Nice oval shape to it. 
nice and blue so it keeps the bait calm. You can put an option with a recirc pump on it as, as well. It has a really neat drain system that you can sort of play with a little bit to get the inflow and outflow exactly right at that perfect equilibri equilibrium to, um, to keep all the bait happy in there. All right, once again, you see the friction hinges, no um, strap here or shock or anything like that to get in the way of your net or anything like that. Nice big opening so you can dump your net in there and get your bait out easily. We latch that down. The boat comes with another well right here, okay? This is a this is an optional release well and it's just a secondary well both these boxes are are insulated here which is important you know if you're going to be keeping bait in there you want to not get the water temperatures too high so that insulation keeps the water nice and, and cool in there but nonetheless even if you get it as an optional release well you can keep the well dry if you want, okay? We have it set up right now here where we can go ahead, if we turn on the switch, it's gonna fill up and we'll put bait in it. But nonetheless, you can keep it completely dry so you can use it as a secondary storage well or you can use it as that release well. It's 24 gallons as well. So it's nice and big this way. You can fit good size fish in here, whether if, you want, if you're a tournament angler or something like that, you wanna bring fish back to the weigh-in or if you're out just fishing and you're planning on keeping a couple fish and maybe you catch a smaller one, um, you can throw it in there and sort of what you'd call cull. If, if you caught a bigger one and wanted to throw the smaller one away uh, back into the water, you just take it, take the smaller one out, throw them in there and put the bigger one back in here. And of course that small one's still in great shape. So that's a nice, nice added option for the, for the boat as well. And I said, like I said, it could be used as a storage box. And then you have another storage box right back here okay that also houses your power pole pump and also houses your fuel water separator okay so the fuel water separator is really easy to access that's important your power pole pump is out of the elements it's not down in the bilge where it's going to get in the salt water or anything like that so that's a great place for that setup also you can use it for like i said secondary storage so yet again even more storage put that down I'll move this up and I'll show you exactly how this works. So the pulling tower is an option on this boat, okay? The boat does a lot of things really, really well. So like I said, you, we have the standard trolling motor wiring on the boat and you can do that. You can put the trolling motor on there. You can option, option it out with the pulling tower and then you can option it out with the pulling tower and this backrest. But as you can see here, this works as a great step up onto the top of the tower, which is really, really comfortable, easy to manage. Um, you know, as we're get, I get older or everything like that, that is a little hard to navigate up on top of a pulling tower um, sometimes. And with this step, it makes it super easy to get down here very safe, safely and comfortably. And like I said, it works great as a, a, as a backrest too. But really neat setup, all right? Now you can do a number of th different things here to option out the boat color-wise. So this person opted for the white powder coating. Obviously you can get it in the standard um, polished aluminum. Okay, that's the silver. The boat comes also with, you can option it with Sea Deck packages, whether it's the, the gray and black, okay, Fotique or the brown and black. You can do that on the pulling tower. If you wanna get a bow tower, you can do it on that as well. You can do it under, under gunnel boards as well, down where the rods are. That's a really nice feature. You can tie everything together. You can do it even with the gel coat. So you could tie the whole package together. All right, so that really nice setup up here. This Sea Deck is super comfortable, especially in the pulling tower set up here. So it keeps nice and cushioned up there and it's also nice and cool as well. So I talked about the importance to us of when we, design, we redesigned this boat, of making sure that it balanced well with a number of engine packages. Here we have the 90 Yamaha SHO, super great engine, um, fits this boat really, really well. We also are gonna offer it with a 70 um, and all the way up to a 115, okay? But with this 90, um, you get mid to lower 40s, top end, and get at that it's about four and a half miles per gallon which is really really good and then also at just about 32 miles per hour you're getting almost six and a half miles per gallon which is great so the the tank has i mean the boat has a 32 gallon fuel cell um, standard so 
that's you do the math there and that range is is really big and what's really nice about it is you don't have to go to the gas station every time before you go fishing because you're going to have plenty of range of the, the, that fuel mileage at you know six and a half miles per gallon is really really good so this is a great package as i said if you like a little more speed you can do the f-115 um, if you're not worried about speed you can go back down to the f-70 the boat drafts about 11 inches of water okay even with the the 90 on it and so the boat still sits shallow still very very well balanced you know poles really really well because of that a lot of times if you have a boat that doesn't support that engine weight well back in the back you're going to have that nose pop up a bunch not only is that going to make the boat loud but also it's going to make it easily be pushed around by the wind that's not the case with with this boat at all so it balances really really well with this engine package all the way up to that 115. another thing i didn't touch on before is that Hughes have been very popular for a really, really long time because they're known as really solid boats, very well built, very safe. There are no surprises with them. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. They last for a really long time. And obviously, we've incorporated everything we've done in the past into this boat in terms of the construction techniques, but we've only enhanced them. And, and one of the biggest enhancements is these boats are now vacuum infused. So they're built using our proprietary Varus system which is a vacuum assisted resin infusion system and that makes those laminates really really strong and really really stiff so you can make them strong but keep them really nice and light still so that creates that great fuel economy makes it also easier to push the bow, bow around, boat around when you pull so that's a, a big enhancement we still put backing plates under any place you're going to have a hinge or anything like that the boats are built to the abyc requirements which are a standard yet above the coast guard um, so the boats are as safe and well built as you can possibly buy so in closing i hope i've done a good job of showing you exactly how we've enhanced this boat we've taken one of the most popular flats boats of all time and only made it better We've made it lighter, we've made it faster, we've made it better balance with the engine, uh, with various engine packages. We've made it with a bigger console so you can put the uh, bigger electronics on it. But just an all great around great package, great family boat. You can also hardcore fish out of it. A great boat to raise a family with and teach your kids how to fish and that kind of stuff. You know you've made a very wise investment when you buy a used because of the exceptional quality, the exceptional construction. So do yourself a favor, go to Hughes.com, type in the, your zip code to the, to the dealer locator and find your local Hughes dealer and go check out the new Hughes Redfisher 16.